Hello, and welcome to our pre-lab activity associated with the immune system. Now, when we take a look at the immune system, uh, the first thing we need to organize is to think about the organization of essentially the lymphatic uh, system, the immune system. And this is going to uh, range from uh, diffuse lymphatic tissues, so essentially uh, our migrating lymphocytes throughout the body, uh, which have a tendency to accumulate in certain locations, uh, but think about them as where they can be found uh, throughout the body. We've got a series of unencapsulated aggregates, essentially clusters of lymphatic cells, lymphatic uh, uh, cells and tissues, uh, like we'd see in lymph nodules, like our Peyer's patches within uh, the intestines, as well as distinct lymphatic organs, such as the lymph node, uh, the spleen, and the thymus. So we're going to start out at the simplest level and then move up to uh, the more complex structures. And so with the diff diffuse lymphatic tissues, what we're looking at is essentially locations where we're going to have large numbers of lymphocytes, white blood cells. And so these are commonly going to be found underneath the epithelia of the skin, uh, they may be found in the small intestine, but basically in locations of the body that may be subject to invasion by foreign pathogenic materials. And so if we have damage to the skin, uh, we cut through the skin, it's possible for a bacteria or some other type of harmful uh, substance to get through what would be the normal protective mechanism, get into the body, and you want these white blood cells, these lymphocytes to be present to be able to respond to that, to be able to recognize it as a, a potential pathogen. Similarly, in the small intestine, we're bringing lots of materials in our food, into our body, uh, and the small intestine is going to have a very thin walled structure to allow for absorption of the materials. It makes it susceptible to potential disease causing things from being able to get into our, uh, our body by passing through the epithelium. So when we take a look at this, lots of lymphocytes over here, relatively small cells, not a whole lot of cytoplasm being present, but uh, a very heterochromatic nucleus. So if you see these clusters or accumulations of basophilic cells, especially within a loose connective tissue underlying epithelia, you th should think about the fact that these cells are probably going to be, or at least consider them, uh, and rule out that they're going to be lymphocytes, because chances are they're going to be lymphocytes when you take a look at them. Now, lymph nodules are going to be more organized structures, uh, but they're still found uh, in a variety of locations in the body. And what you're going to be looking at is going to be an example of reactive uh, tissue. And so what you've got is a circular aggregation of lymphocytes. And so primarily B lymphocytes, the lymphocytes that are capable of producing uh, antibodies. And so what you're going to look at is, in this case, we've got uh, a secondary lymph nodule. A primary lymph nodule is going to be circular aggregate of those small lymphocytes and evenly dark, kind of like what we got over here in the mantle zone, kind of around the outside of the circular aggregate. To the inside of that, we're going to have a lighter staining appearance, but still lots of basophilic staining because we can see the nuclei that are present with all of these B lymphocytes. The lymphocytes are capable of producing antibodies. Uh, but it has a lighter staining appearance than these very, very small, densely packed lymphocytes up here because these cells have become activated. They're larger cells. They have more cytoplasm. Uh, they're going to be involved with producing antibodies because they've been activated to some potential uh, disease-causing pathogen that they're going to respond to. Lymph nodules can be found in like the Peyer's patches in the intestines. They can be found in uh, the tonsils, uh, as well as within our larger organs like uh, the lymph node and the white pulp of the spleen. Getting into the more organized structures, uh, we've got the lymph nodes. Uh, and again, the lymph node, we've got essentially a connective tissue capsule around the outside. We've got extensions of the connective tissue capsule, which are the trabeculi that are going to extend into the organ. And then we're going to have reticular cells and reticular fibers, reticular connective tissue, forming a jungle gym type structure through the rest of the lymph node. Again, keep in mind the lymph nodes are going to be found along the lymphatic circulatory system. So lymph is going to be coming in through a lymphatic vessel, an afferent lymphatic vessel, dumping the lymph, uh, the fluid, the debris, the lymphocytes into an area underlying the capsule. And then those materials are going to have to filter through, almost percolate through the tissues to get into the medullary sinuses down here at the central region and drain from this lymph node. So if we take a look at this, we're going to have um, the capsule around the outside. The cortex, where we're going to have lymph nodules, and again, lymph nodules are going to be B lymphocyte territory, the cells that are capable of producing antibodies. So we got 
some good secondary lymph nodules over here in the germinal center, uh, mantle around the outside. Uh, lots of uh, basophilic staining, lots of lymphocytes throughout the cortex over here. The deep cortex is essentially an area where we're going to have lots of that basophilic staining, lots of these small lymphocytes without the lymph nodules up here at the top. The deep cortex, sometimes called the paracortex in, in some books, no lymph nodules, and this is going to be primarily T lymphocyte territory. So B lymphocytes um, within the lymph nodules, T lymphocytes within the, the deep cortex or paracortex. And then finally here within the medulla, the lighter region, uh, inner region of the lymph node, we're going to have medullary sinuses and medullary cords. The medullary cords are going to be where we have cells that are located. The medullary sinuses are going to be essentially lymphatic spaces where the fluids that have been filtering through, percolating through our cortex and paracortex are going to drain into our medullary sinuses, become accumulated, and then leave the lymph node through an efferent and exiting um, lymphatic vessel. The next organ we're going to look at is going to be the thymus. Uh, the thymus is going to be a gland involved with T lymphocyte production. And so we're going to be producing T lymphocytes. We take a look at this. Uh, we don't have lymph nodules. Again, keep in mind lymph nodules are an indication that we're looking at B lymphocytes. The thymus is going to be exclusively T lymphocytes. Uh, the support meshwork within this, uh, instead of a reticular connective tissue that we saw in the lymph node, is going to be an epithelial reticular uh, cell. So instead of a uh, connective tissue element, what we're going to have are specialized cells having a long cytoplasmic process, a stellate process, almost star-like processes, extending throughout this. So instead of fibers, we're going to have the cells themselves, these epithelial reticular cells. They're going to pro provide the supporting meshwork uh, within the thymus. Now the function of the thymus, we're going to have uh, kind of regions of cortex, regions of medulla, lighter staining in this area, is going to be the production of T lymphocytes during development. And so it's going to look nice and kind of evenly stained lobes within the thymus uh, in a young thymus in an adult or aged thymus, you're going to see less of the, the cortex and medulla and more white fat cells, more adipocytes, as the thymus has less of a, a role later on uh, in life. Now, if we take a look at this a little bit higher magnification, we can see a nice area of cortex here. Lots of small basophilic cells, very even basophilic staining appearance because we got these small uh, T lymphocyte precursors packed in on one another. In the medulla here, we're actually going to be looking at larger lymphocytes, and so it's going to have a paler staining appearance. Still lots of basophilic cells, lots of nuclei that you can see here, uh, but paler staining in relationship to the cortex around the outside. Uh, you may be able to identify some epithelial reticular cells. Uh, they extend throughout the entire thymus itself, but they may be a little bit easier to identify uh, within the medulla. I think I skipped a slide. Uh, and then another identifying characteristic associated with the thymus are these thymic corpuscles or sometimes called Hassel's corpuscles. These are going to be essentially these kind of concentric areas of epithelial reticular cells. They may become keratinized, but essentially it's, it's a kind of a, a cluster or an aggregate uh, that's going to form. So we can see lots of lymphocytes around it, you know, T lymphocytes because we know we're in the thymus, uh, small basophilic staining appearance. And these epithelial reticular cells form this kind of keratinized cluster, which are going to be an identifying characteristic associated with the thymus. The next organ we're going to look at is going to be the spleen. Again, keep in mind the spleen has two roles. Uh, it's involved with white pulp, uh, and the white pulp is going to be immune system. Uh, and the red pulp is essentially going to be uh, monitoring and evaluating red blood cells so that aged red blood cells, damaged red blood cells, or essentially red blood cells that aren't all that flexible are going to be taken out of the circulation and their materials are going to be breaking, broken down and recycled. And so in this slide uh, we've got um, differences of, of white pulp and, and red pulp. Uh, if we take a look at the white pulp uh, initially, what we're going to see is a branch of the central artery. And so that's going to be a branch of the splenic artery, basically an arterial at this point is going to be carrying blood into a region. It's going to be immediately surrounded by the periarterial lymphatic sheath, the PALS, which are going to be T lymphocytes, which are going to be immediately surrounding it. 
again, the nice small basophilic staining appearance that we have uh, of lymphocytes throughout the body. Now, kind of outside of that, so outside of that central artery, the periarterial lymphatic sheath, at certain locations, we're going to have lymph nodules. And again, like we talked about in other areas, lymph nodules are going to be an indication that we're looking at B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes are the ones that are capable of producing antibodies. Um, now, they're going to be called Malpighian corpuscles, um, just to give them a specialized name. Uh, our Malpighian corpuscles are going to be lymphatic nodules that are found within the spleen but are reactive. And so they're, in essence, secondary lymphatic nodules within the spleen. Now, the red pulp is going to be red because of the appearance of lots of red blood cells are going to be present. And so at a higher magnification, you can see the reddish staining in the red blood cells that are kind of through here. We have this kind of weird situation going on within the red pulp of the spleen. Basically, blood vessels are going to be coming down into this region, and we're going to have an open circulatory system so that the blood vessels are going to dump the red blood cells into the splenic cords. They're basically going to dump the red blood cells into a connective tissue area uh, supported by reticular cells and fibers. Uh, but basically, what's going to happen is the red blood cells are going to have to get from the splenic cords into the splenic sinuses. The splenic sinuses are going to be sinusoidal capillaries. So they're going to be specialized capillaries, long endothelial cells, uh, which are going to form basically rings around the, the capillary, rings around these splenic sinuses. And so what happens then is that the red blood cells end up in the splenic cords, end up in the connective tissue. They have to get back into the circulatory system. So they're going to have to squeeze through the gaps between the endothelial cells through the basal lamina. So they got to be very flexible. If they're not very flexible, they're going to be trapped within the splenic cords, and macrophages that are in the area are going to phagocytize them, and they're going to break them down and recycle the materials. So in essence, what this means then is that the red blood cells that get dumped into the splenic cords the only ones that are able to get back into the circulation are going to be good, viable, flexible red blood cells because they're going to be able to squeeze through the gaps and get back into the splenic sinuses, get into the, uh, the cardiovascular system vessels, and then be circulated out through the rest of the body. So we have a mechanism to essentially filter out or select out uh, old or damaged red blood cells. And then the final structure we'll look at uh, are uh, tonsils. Uh, we got, again, a, a palatine tonsil here, so we've got a lymph nodule, again, a circular, relatively circular aggregate of lymphocytes, lots of small basophilic cells packed in on top of one another, uh, and we're going to know that this is going to be a tonsil because we can see it's underlying, uh, located in, in the connective tissue, underneath, in this case, a minimally keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, so minimally keratinized stratified squamous, we know that we're going to be uh, in a moist cavity, uh, it's going to be subject to abrasion. Uh, so we get the minimally keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. We're going to see a lymph nodule here. We see the lymph nodule underneath the uh, simple columnar epithelium. We know we're looking at uh, a lymph node, uh, lymph uh, nodule uh, within the Peyer's patch uh, within the intestines. And that's what we have on this next slide. And so this is a very low magnification view. But again, you can see the circular aggregate of these lymphocytes. Um, the mantle around the outside, uh, the germinal center to the inside, but lots and lots of very basophilic cells, lots and lots of L lymphocytes. This is underlying the um, ileum of the small intestine. So we can take a look at this. We're going to have villi up here that you're going to talk about in one of the upcoming lectures. If we look at it at higher magnification, we're going to see that these are lined by a simple columnar epithelium. And so that's going to be an indication that we're within the intestine, uh, the small intestine, because we, we know we, we see the villi. Uh, we may see some antigen-presenting cells, uh, but they're basically very difficult to identify in, in light microscopy. But these would be M cells, cells that are essentially sampling uh, the materials that are passing through the lumen of the intestines and extending a process, a cellular process, cytoplasmic process, down into these lymph nodules to basically say, you know, I found this within the lumen. Is this good? Is this bad? Is it, you know, a possible pathogenic uh, source? This finishes up our, our pre-lab activity associated with the immune system. Hopefully you'll be able to go through the slides now and identify the structures uh, that we've been talking about. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Thank you.